Previously, I made the world's smallest USB keyboard, and you guys kept commenting, Where's the mouse? Make the world's smallest mouse. You need to make a tiny mouse. What? You think I'm a slave who does everything what some strangers on the internet tell me to do? If that's what you really think, you're absolutely right. So in this video, we're going to build the world's smallest mouse and give our tiny keyboard a tiny friend. We'll also compare the new mouse with my daily driver, the Logitech G703, by playing games and going through my daily workflow. Now, since we want the title of the world's smallest computer mouse, I did some research and found our main competitor, the Zero Mouse. Huh? It's approximately the size of two quarters, and our goal is to make it smaller. But before we build our tiny computer mouse, let's understand how a mouse actually works. And for that, I have the perfect sacrifice. Nice! Wait, hold up. This product can expose you to styrene, which is known to the state of California to cause cancer? Bruh. Well, good thing I'm not in California. Huh? The inside of a computer mouse is pretty simple. We have the two clickety clacks for the left and right clicks, the scroll wheel for scrolling, obviously, and finally, we have the image sensor to detect changes in position, along with an LED to provide light for the image sensor. This is great and all, but we still don't know how a mouse actually works. For that, we need to study the image sensor, and to help huh? us learn about it, here's a satellite image of a map. Stay with me, I promise it's related. Imagine this point as your current position. Now, if I gave you an updated map with a new center point, you see that you've traveled several meters to the right. This is exactly what a computer mouse does with the image sensor. It takes several pictures every second while it's moving and compares its previous image with the new one to calculate how far the mouse traveled. But obviously, your mouse isn't taking pictures of Paris. Instead, it's taking pictures of the table surface or a mouse pad where it has tiny ridges that look like mountains up close and look similar to a satellite image. That's why your mouse cannot work on certain Bruh. materials like super smooth surfaces, like Nibbles' brain. You have a smooth brain. No ridges or lumps or valleys or bumps. All ideas slide right off. Smooth. Enough talk, let's build this thing. I think we can recycle the major components of this mouse, specifically the image sensor with the processor and the LED. I'm sure we can reduce the size by placing the LED closer to the sensor. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Ah, uh, past just Kim. How naive of you to think that it would be that easy. My initial thought was that the red LED can be placed anywhere as long as it provided some amount of light where the image sensor is located. And at one point, I even thought the transparent lens can be removed entirely to reduce the total size. Boy, was I wrong. I tried every possible angle and distance, shining the light to the image sensor, but nothing was working. To further add to the issues, my original plan was to 3D print a smaller lens using transparent resin. But if you've ever worked with clear resin, you know that they usually end up turning yellow, and the transparency gets cloudy. If we take a look at the original lens, we see that it needs to be very clear. At this point, I was ready to call it quits, because the mouse wouldn't be considered that small, with the original size of the LED and the image sensor, and I was ready to scrap this video. But then, I had a big brain moment. We can reuse the original transparent lens and just reduce the total size by shaving off some of its plastic with a Dremel. This way, I'm technically keeping a similar structure of the original mouse where the direction of the light is kept the same. If this works, this is going to be the easiest project I've ever done on this channel. No custom circuit boards, no custom 3D parts, and best of all, no coding. I hate programming with a passion. All right, let's get to work. Let's test out the new mouse. Here we go. Oh my God, it's working. Yes. This is so freaking cool. I'm using the world's smallest mouse, but there's something off about the movement. Ah. I see the issue. If we take a closer look at the bottom of the original mouse case, we see that there's a slight lift where the lens sits on top. This lift allows the red LED to light up the table surface for the image sensor. This is exactly what we need for our tiny mouse. A quick and dirty solution is to place our mouse on top of the original case to achieve the lift. Bruh. Perfect. Everything's working as expected with the fix. Let's do a quick performance test on our tiny mouse. Movements are looking good. I can look around without issues. Wait a minute. I can't mine anything. I don't have left or right clicks. And I can't punch this cow. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Who could have seen this coming? We did. We all saw this coming. The mouse obviously needs left and right clicks. And luckily, I found a solution. We'll use our tiny mouse for looking around like we did before, but use the G703 for left and right clicks. It's perfect. Also, I found these two perfectly sized and fully soldered push buttons, and they can work as left and right clicks for the tiny mouse. Since the video is about making the world's smallest mouse, I guess we should use these buttons. All right, it works. 
So we have all the ingredients to make the world's smallest mouse, except we're missing the case. But that's an easy fix. First, we'll cut up a 3D model of it, put it through our 3D printer software, get our 3D printer to actually print it, sanding, sanding, sanding. After, we'll assemble everything together. And finally, we have the world's tiniest mouse. We of course need to do a mandatory size check. It's 37 millimeters by 21 millimeters by 14 millimeters. It's pretty damn small. Much smaller than the zero mouse and approximately the size of one and a half quarters. <laughs> Look at the tiny mouse with the tiny hands. Look at it. With our tiny mouse completed, it's time for the real question. Can it beat the G703 and label this as a gaming mouse? To find out, we'll be playing Valorant in Minecraft, as well as test out some catting software on both mice. First up is Valorant, where we will focus on aiming for this test. And the G703 will go first. A few moments later. Wow. Not bad. A score of 16. Let's test out our tiny mouse. Bruh. Huh? A few minutes later. The movements felt rough on this tiny mouse, and the push buttons need a lot more force to click when compared to the regular mouse. Overall, it was much harder aiming using our tiny mouse. As you've already seen from the scores, the G703 takes the lead. Next up is Minecraft, where we will explore and try our best to survive. Okay, so we're going to create a new world. This seed is supposed to give us direct access to the mansion. It's right here. Oh, perfect. Okay, let's go. Oh, okay, wow. Please get away from- Ah! Here to get all my stuff. No! Oh, no! Oh, no! All right, let's try with the, uh, with their tiny mouse. All right, here we go. Here we go. Movements are pretty good. I can look around without issues. Whoa, 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 Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Oof! Oh, okay. I actually got to hit them. Okay. Oh, no, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Bruh. Oh, no! <laughs> The tiny mouse had minor issues, registering left and right clicks at various times. But overall, I didn't run into any major issues, so I'm going to call this a tie. Huh? Lastly, the catting software will test involve 3D modeling and circuit design. But unfortunately for the tiny mouse, it automatically lost because it doesn't have the scroll wheel and the middle click that are used for zooming in and out, as well as move to different views quickly for editing. So our tiny mouse didn't do well in the competition, but you know what it's good at that the G703 can't compete in? A mouse toy for nibbles. Now, the video wouldn't be complete if we didn't use our tiny mouse with the tiny keyboard. But it feels weird using this setup with a big monitor. So obviously, I had to fix this by getting this tiny monitor. Look at them. They look perfect together. All I'm missing now is a tiny PC. Subscribe so you don't miss the tiny gaming PC video. Also, shout out to Basically Homeless for doing this video idea four years ago. Nice. I was gonna play either Valorant or Minecraft again with our tiny setup, but I wanted to challenge myself with a new game. So instead, we're gonna play Elden Ring. We'll start off with a new character, build a perfect Giga Chat, Bruh. and here we go. No, no, what? Wow, that took no time at all. <laughs> the WASD keys for movements were too close to each other, and it was really difficult maneuvering around the enemy. Also, the spacebar didn't get registered a lot of the times. Bruh. The mouse, however, was actually better than expected. The left and right clicks worked most of the time, and I had no issues looking around. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's do this. Oh crap! No, 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 that's not what I want to do. That is not what I want to do. No. Oh, wow, the space bar is not working as I wanted to. Come on! Oh. No, no, no. No, we got this. We still got this. Oh, my. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not what I wanted to press. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Before ending the video, I want to give a big thanks to everyone on our Discord server for all the suggestions and helping me complete this project. And if you have a video suggestion or just want to say hi to everyone, check out our server. Link is in the description. Also, let me know down in the comments what I should play next on our tiny gaming setup. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this project. Thanks everyone and see you next time.